We've had a look at a couple of experiences here, which, you know, you kind of need a camera, a big screen, uh, an actor dressed up in a motion capture suit. I would love to have that in my living room, but that's not really going to happen. With our next one, the mobile AR, yeah. this is the sort of stuff that anybody can do, whether they're at home, whether they're out on a walk with a family, yeah. or in the classroom, right? Absolutely. Let's take a look. Sure. Okay, so <clears throat> over here, we've got okay. an iPad. Hold that for a sec. I'll hold the I'll iPad for you. Yep, that's on the screen now. And we have a copy of? The Guinness World Records. Guinness Book of World Records. Cool. Okay, I'll let you fire this yeah, up. Yeah, I'll grab it up. Cool. So, so what we, this is where we actually began. We began developing the concept of AR on mobile. So what we've got here is a conventional iPad. iPad has an application downloaded from, uh, from the App Store. This works on Android and iOS. And then what we've done is we've developed a system that allows the iPad to track the book in real time and then render 3D content on top of it. So what we're seeing here is a rendering of the world's smallest man to scale, triggered for it's effectively a digital pop-up book. Sure. So the camera on your iPad, that could be an Android, that could be a, a smartphone equally. Absolutely. But it's spotting that this book, it knows that there's something about this book. It's a marker, a hotspot, whatever you want to call yep. it. And then it's overlaying this content on top. And it's the clever thing is that where, how, you know, you move around yep. it, it adjusts accordingly. So what you've got, because it's tracking the page and it's measuring probably about 100 points on the page, it allows us to actually walk around and view it in 3D. So it knows my position relative to the book's position and then renders the 3D content accordingly. So I can't go around there because of the monitor, but hopefully my hand's steady enough <laughs> to illustrate the point. Now, I first started seeing this technology probably about four years ago. Yeah. It was a little bit rubbish, I'm not going to lie, back then. <laughs> yep. This is kind of where we're at now in terms of state-of-the-artness, so, you know, how solid the experience is. Yeah, I think the, I, the, the tracking, the tracking, i.e. what the camera can look at and recognize and then lock to, improves almost on a you know, sort of three-month basis. Right. So we've, you know, I, back in 2009, we went through a period where we had demos that would barely track. If we were under a particular light, it would not work because the actual, the contrast, yeah would destroy the track. But then the cameras in these devices have got so much better as well, haven't they? Absolutely, well but you get software. into very odd situations where the autofocus will cause you issues. Oh yeah, hunting Because around. it's continually reassessing. Of course it is. I guess one of the challenges, uh, level with me here, is yeah. that who knows what QR codes are? Everyone knows what QR codes are, you know, those little kind of like 3D barcodes. You know that when you see one of those, you can scan it, okay? You know what to do with it. It's very, very visual what it is. Unless you knew that there was an app on your device that accompanies this. There's nothing obvious with this Guinness Book of Records yep. that you would know that there's some augmented content to go with that. Is that a bit of a challenge for you? It, it is. It's, what we've done over the years is we've actually had to build campaigns around the, the actual application itself to, yeah. to allow, you know, to evangelize and allow people to understand how it works. Yeah. And I think it's one of the kind of great ironies of the AR industry at the moment that you spend all of your time developing something that doesn't require a specific marker. <laughs> and then because it doesn't have a specific marker, no one knows where the content's appearing from. Speaking of content in you know, unexpected places, yeah. you've got some stuff going on on the Jurassic Coast, haven't you? Yeah, we've had a, we've had a system there that's actually been installed for, for nearly two years. And it's the idea, of, instead of actually triggering content on the book itself, it's the idea of you going along a tourist trail on the south coast of the Isle of Wight and actually triggering from markers and then seeing the dinosaurs actually roam around the physical landscape, yeah. which is a really kind of terrifying and exciting project to develop. But um, it's kind of it's an amazing concept to actually see the content in a real world, properly in a real world environment. So before long, we'll all be walking around, maybe with our tablets going, oh yeah, hello, okay, nice, nice. Or maybe in our glasses, but we'll come to that in a moment. Yep. Now, talking about QR codes, this marker does look a little bit like a QR code in some funny way. Let's see what you've got here. Yep. So what we've got here is a concept that we're developing for the education industry. And it's the idea of me using, being able to trigger artifacts inside a, a classroom environment and then be able to teach with them. So as you'll probably see as a step on from what we've seen with Guinness, yeah. I can now actually manipulate the content in real time and trigger it. So I can also move it left to right here as well. So what we're starting to do is build out larger and larger 3D environments yep, yep. and allow children to actually be taught using the artifacts they probably never even visit. Yeah, and you know, so many schools are embracing iPads, 
tablets, smart devices. Yeah, many kids have got this stuff anyway. So I can see that this is a, this is a fun way. You know, I love this stuff. Yeah. It makes a change from opening a textbook. I can understand the value of this in a classroom. You know, maybe not every day, but certainly, you know, you know once I think, a week or twice a week or whatever. Yeah, I think, I think the idea of kind of gamifying the experience and allowing, we were talking yesterday, I was talking to a, to a friend of mine, we were talking about allowing people to actually explore the idea of evolution as a group. So they can yeah. actually play a game that's actually triggering characters, et cetera, in front of them yeah. and make decisions based on what will happen next.